All right, this is topic two, work against gravity. And um, this is supposed to be, let me grab this really quick, work from multiple forces. Uh, I left some of my equipment at home to do the recordings, so I'm just going to make this on the iPad like the uh, explain everything ones you guys make. This is going to be done on page 13 of your notebook. Just to review so far, 7 and 8 should be your warm up. 9 and 10 should be notes from the iPad book. 11 and 12 should be um, topic 1. And nothing here yet. And then. Uh, Sorry, 13 and 14. So this should be 14. It's going to be topic 2. So this is where we are today. Okay, part 1 is going to be um, work against gravity. And so in this example here, oops, we're just thinking about like um, a weightlifter or just when you're lifting things up. Can you calculate the work being done then? So when you're working against gravity, it's actually pretty easy. You guys know half of this already. Uh, let's get blue. So say uh, our weightlifter is going to be lifting this up. Um, well, if we know the distance is, I don't know, three meters, really tall Lego star trooper. Um, so there's the distance part. Distance equals three. Well, now we need to know force in order to find work equals force times distance. Well, but we're lifting up. We're working against gravity. So if we know force gravity, you know the force we have to f apply to overcome it. So force gravity equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, we'll say this is 100 kilograms. And then it'll be times just 9.8. Once you find force, then it's just a work problem. So it would be uh, 980 times 3 equals, uh, I don't know, hold on. So that equals 2940 uh, joules. So once again, the units are joules when we're doing work and energy stuff. Here's another common example of a work against gravity that kind of makes a good point. Oops. Pause. So if we have this little uh, businessman here, and he's going to be, whoa. There we go. I'm back. And he's going to be um, walking up these stairs. We want to know how much work does he do on his, uh, let's go five kilogram briefcase, as he climbs up the stairs. The important thing to know is that um, he's he's lifting up. He's having to work against gravity again, right? So the, the direction that he's doing his actual work, he's not really moving forward against anything. We'll assume that air resistance is tiny. So when you have an example like this, the only distance that matters is actually the height because that's the direction, remember, force has to be parallel to um, the displacement in order to matter. So it's only the parallel component. Only looking at the force he's applying as he moves up is the only one that matters. So the force is going to be um, 5 times 9.8 mass times the acceleration due to gravity equals 49 newtons. The distance is just going to be the vertical component, the up part, 10 meters. So the answer is going to be 490. So here's kind of the thing. If you end up in the same spot, if you end up in the same spot, he could have just easily climbed this ladder. Um, it's just harder, but you cover less distance. So it takes more force, but less distance. The stairs makes it easier, but you have to go farther. So it makes the distance longer, but the force less. This one, the distance is shorter, but the
but the force is more. But to end up at the same spot, it doesn't matter how you get there, it's going to take the same amount of work. Finally, we've got part two, work for multiple forces. This is an example from your book. Um, what if we have something like this? Um, the two people are applying a force, and let's see what happens. First of all, it's worth noting that the up and down components, you know, the, the gravity is pushing down, the ground pushes up, they cancel out. But let's see what happens when this guy pushes with more force than that guy. How much work overall will be done, and how much work does each person do? Um, so if we assume the distance covered, we'll start there, is one meter. Well, this person's going to do a positive three joules of work because it's in the same direction as motion. Uh, this guy is going to do a total of negative 1.5 because it's in the opposite direction of motion. And so you can, what you really end up with is you've got work equals your net force times distance. Because if you add these two together, well, it's going to be 1.5. That's the same thing. If you look at your net force a little bit this way, more that way, 1.5 times 1. So I could ask you any of these three questions. How much work does person A do? How much work does person B do? Or how much work overall does the object have done on it? And that'll be another type of question. Maybe you're going to see a work against gravity question. Maybe you're going to see a work from multiple forces questions. And it'll just be a nice two-dimensional something like this. Okay, there's a worksheet that goes with this. It's called Topic 1 and 2, Practice with Answers on the website. Um, so when you finish this video, work on those or work on the original questions that go with the textbook.